Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're now on episode 3 of our 1500 horsepower GT63 build series. In this video, we'll take a closer look at some of the engine internals, measure a few things, and start sizing the rings on the new pistons. Enjoy. So we have everything disassembled, as you can see. Uh, we're just gonna do an inspection on all the components. See if there's any wear on any of the cylinder walls, any of the bearings, like I can already see this one right here. You see it kind of started wearing out. That's the main bearing on the crank. This is the last uh, the last one, right? Yeah, yeah. Towards the back of the motor. Yep. Yeah, so. For the most part, uh, this one on the side, you have some wear. See? Not bad, but I mean, it's worse than all the others. What about inside the block? Uh, like those ones, those ones were fine. Yeah, nothing, right? So it's just, yeah. yeah. Maybe, uh, what about the rods? Oh, they look good. Nothing on the rods? Good. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. A slight wear, but nothing like crazy. Like the top, or the top bearing is worse, but it's always like that. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, you can uh, kind of see a little yeah. bit of a wear from the coating. But that's still, but that's top of the time. Yeah. <clears throat> In stock form, these engines hold. I mean, we've done multiple builds at a thousand wheel horsepower and uh, they had no problems. Like, no failure. Customers daily drive the cars. Obviously, not at a thousand wheel daily driven. It's, you know, with map switching on different things, fuel on like an E blend uh, type of fuel, right? But on pump gas, they put down 850, 860 all day. Yeah. Every day, no problems whatsoever. And that was never problems. Yeah. So, so I mean, we want to make double. Yeah, we we want well, we want 1500 horsepower. So 1500 horsepower, say whatever, 1300, 1350 wheel on our dyno. That's probably where we're gonna end up with. Yep. So uh, yeah, I think I think it's very achievable. I don't think we'll have too many issues at that power level. Have a look at the cylinder walls. See if the cylinder walls are okay. I mean, can't really feel anywhere. There's just like a little bit of marks on it. Um, these are alu seal walls on these yeah. blocks. The car so have only 40. 40k on it. Yeah. So it's no scoring anywhere. Yep. No, uh, no well, scoring anywhere on the pistons either, right? Like it's all clean. No damage. The rods are straight. Yeah, pretty much all of it. So, well, no issues is anywhere. We uh, mm. we should be good to proceed. Wait. I don't think there was any knock on any of the cylinders because I don't see any. Well, I didn't uh, see any knock in, in Tennessee. You know, these these were a little darker. These had a little more carbon bursts. This one, yeah, we can see all the plugs. This one had a little. I think this uh, this injector was probably leaking a little bit. See how it's a little darker over here? Mm hmm And that one too. These are okay. Even the valves are darker. Yeah. Yeah. The other ones. Uh -huh. Yeah. No, you can see it's a little. It's mm -hmm. more like black I'm around the it. around the injector hole. Yeah. So. That's warm. Oh, we're gonna be replacing the manual. Yeah, this one looks good. They're all the same, more or less. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. No, the engine was running good overall. Like we made 1,100 wheel horsepower on these turbos on the stock motor. Just didn't want to push it, obviously, because stock engine is not gonna it won't like it too much. We always keep telling people the same thing. You know, you should if you're trying to get to a certain number, if you have a goal in mind for power, and it's over a thousand wheel, build the engine, build it before it blows, because once it does. A lot more money to fix. I was checking for the parts of this one. And I, uh, I've seen the uh, locks available with the pistons mm -hmm. close to 30 gram. But yeah, so that's yeah. If a rod bends and then uh, breaks and it comes through the side of the block, it's thirty thousand dollars for a short block. So <laughs> it's a lot cheaper to buy uh, pistons and rods right away, put them in, and yeah, blue, make your power. So be smart. People with stock cranks, they were making 12, 13. On this? Yeah. 
mm -hmm. just with rods really, not even changing pistons, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think that the crank is gonna have any issues personally, but what else? Heads, what are we doing with the heads? Are we gonna send them out to replace the seals? Um, well, well, see the seal shape. Is there any valve that's, uh, that's yeah, well. you can see? Uh, you can just kind of see you can see carbon build up on top of the valve, but it's not, I mean, it's normal. It's a direct injected car. I am not running masks or anything. So yeah, you'll have some build up for sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, maybe it wouldn't hurt to clean everything and have the seals replaced. We already have the head off or the heads. Maybe a light polish, I don't know. We might do that, but I don't want to pour it. I don't want to pour it Yeah, because People have done that and had worse results actually mm -hmm. on these engines specifically. Uh, might be a good idea to see if we can get some upgraded springs for this. Because I am revving this engine out, I'm revving it higher, right? So mm -hmm. maybe we should take some apart and yeah, might as well let's send it out and yeah, see if we can get something stronger. Yep. Yeah. If the springs are weak and we're revving the engine higher, like I ideally, you know, I was revving it to 7600 on the stock motor. Um, <laughs> With these turbos, we could probably rev it closer to 8,000. So we don't, if we don't replace the springs with something, or if we don't upgrade them rather, uh, we might start getting into valve float at higher RPM and then it's just not gonna make any power. Okay, let me do this. I'm gonna call Arnold now. Cause he wanted, yesterday I talked to him, he wanted me to measure some, uh, like the, 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 the depth of the hole so he can spec the bolts, the RP. Don't tell us what we need to measure. Man, what's up? Hey man, what's going on? Okay, I got the the block all apart. I'm staring at it right now. You got a few minutes? Sure. Yeah, so what, what did you want me to measure? touch later Bye. okay so he's uh, gonna see if we can get uh, some studs from ARP probably gonna try to use the 625s and that's it for now stay tuned Now we need to do the measurements and uh, I'm gonna go and see if anything's available uh, ready for purchase so we don't have to make any custom parts, custom springs. If it's not available then unfortunately we have no choice but uh, what I'll do is I'll send this out to Arnold at PAG and he's gonna measure everything in terms of uh, spring compression and see if it'll be okay at the RPM that we're trying to target. And uh, if it is, then great. We can keep the stock springs and we don't need to worry about it. But if it's not, we're gonna need to think of something. Oh, it's like 37.5. Five. Or that's what I'm saying. In the house. But see this one. As I mentioned in the previous video, we are going to send the cams out to spool. This is, I'm holding the exhaust cam. Uh, from one of the heads right now. And <laughs> basically what Spool does is they grind this part of the cam to allow for more travel on the high pressure pump. And what that'll do, typically it'll increase the flow of the DI pump by 25 to 30%, which we will need to get the power that we're trying to get. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think these are machined a little bigger. See, the gap is wider on the... Bro, don't stress. Don't stress me out. Here. Jeez. You're fine. <laughs> Listen, I don't, I'm just checking everything. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. to go wrong, right? I know. It's That's always great. better to check. Hello right guys, now. Ben here. I ordered the correct uh, color bearings. I'm colorblind. This thing's gonna run for all of 2 RPM. Won't turn on the bench. <laughs> 2 RPM? 2 RPM, yeah. That's two revolutions of Tima <laughs> turning it with the fucking thing. Uh, anyways, we got some bearings we can measure and see. Main bearing lower half. Main bearing lower half, right? So we have the thicker and the thinner one. 